Hey, a pleasant good news fun today, everybody. The NHL season is back, of course, and there's been some great, fantastic games so far, and especially a great, fantastic game for the next team we're doing for NHL Team Preview slash Outlook, the Nashville Smashville Predators. This is a um, thing I got when my dad went down to Bridgestone Arena. He got me a home plate, so I figured that was a good thing to use, a license plate to start this video. But we'll get right into the Smashville Predators. Their team relies a lot on their goaltending, obviously, and how well UC Soros is able to continue to develop, and Pecorine is able to have a bounce back year. Soros looked good game one. He had a 967 save percentage in game one, played very exceptionally well, and only allowed in one goal. Uh, Luke Kinnean, an acquisition, of course, in the offseason, looked very good as well, was able to pot a goal uh, in his thir a little bit over 13 minutes of ice time. So they're building and already showing good success from guys they brought on. Uh, Rocco Grimaldi also looked well out there. So I think this team has a nice little scrappy lineup that they have together. It's just going to be interesting how competitive they're going to be able to be in the Central Division that has Tampa, the Canes, the Stars, the Blue Jackets, and then if Serbe Bobrovsky is able to start playing like an actual Vezina caliber again and adjust in his second season in Florida, they have them as well. So it's going to be interesting to see, especially if they get the assets from a Yondel trade, if they're able to actually fleece or get a little bit more from somebody than expected going in. Um, it's going to be interesting what happens there. Either way, though, this team is still going to be very fun and very exciting because right now I think they're either going to be a team that is right on the outside just missing because of just how close they'll be to either the Blue Jackets being right above them or they'll be the team that make it probably over the Jackets. It's just, for me, I've been so bit by Tortorell in the past. I think that's why I have with my standings projection, I put the Jackets ahead of them. But I could see Nashville, if their goaltending is able to click more than the Blue Jackets are able to click with Corpus Allo and Merz Lincoln, and their defense in Nashville with Yozzi, Ellis, Ekholm, Fabro, uh, Benning they brought in, which added to their defense even more. That was actually a very good underrated acquisition there. Then, yeah, they can certainly make it, especially if Pekka's ever going to have a bounce-back season. And that's one of the main points I want to make in this video. I don't think Pekka is done by any means. I think he had an off-season last year, and everybody freaked out because he's 38. I think uh, it's, it's, it's reasonable, honestly, I think, to have a off-season at that point of your age. The dude's had an exceptional career the season before. He still had a 918 with a 242. I mean... I think he's able to get cut some slack for one year. Uh, last year, they were a team that played not as well um, <clears throat> um, defensively, being ranked just under the 15th spot at 16th, where I'm used to seeing the Nashville Predators obviously play. It was very concise uh, defensive games, but I do think Dave Pole is building a pretty solid team down here. John Hines is a guy that I like as a head coach. I'm just not sure if I really like him as a head coach, and I think him being in Nashville with this younger, scrappier team is definitely going to be able to show if he's able to do that. And because he has a lot of guys that even if they are at the age of 27, the Grimaldi's, the Sissions, the Cousins, those are all those nice, scrappy players. And then he has guys like Yakov Trenin, who's a high-risk prospect, that they hope is going to be able to pan out is kind of getting towards his make or break time uh, for him. But he's a big kid at 201 and 6'2". So if he's able to work out as a second round pick from years ago now, uh, that could be beneficial for them. He played pretty solid in the K, uh, putting up four goals and three assists in 21 game uh, when he was on loan. And he played all right in his cup of coffee last year as well, being able to put up six points. In 21 games, so if he's able to add some input for him, Kelly Yonkroak's always been one of my favorite bottom six players. Brad Richardson's a great guy to just have on your team when you want to kind of make it just fine tool of the machine and make it very work well together. He's a very experienced guy, wins a hell of a lot of face off down there on the fourth line, and is going to play very good defense and can bring that to your penalty kill. So I think this team, with the moves they made, definitely think they're still right there in the making. I think it's just going to be tough to see between them and Columbus which one of those two are able to actually come out 
on top and take that four spot since that's who I think it's going to come down to. I do think it's going to be a very exciting season that Matt Duchesne is going to be able to bounce back and have a very good year in Nashville this year. Johansson's going to have a good year, I think, with Arvison and Forsberg. Uh, Hall is a very good pickup, which I think is going to help Duchesne as well as Kunin if he keeps playing like he did in game one. And then, obviously, having a guy like Nick Cousins, he's a very underrated bottom six player as well. I think that was a good pickup. It's going to really come down to if their defense improves by the numbers this year. And adding a good underrated guy, Matthew Binning, I think helps, as well as a guy like a Mark Borecki, who's also been underrated in his career as well. I think adding those guys for more subtle prices, so to speak, definitely helps your team. And I think they made some good moves, and they got obviously a great goaltender budding in the future in Yaroslav Oskarov. So he's very, 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 very good and going to be very, very good in the future as long as he just stops throwing his stick for no reason like he did in the World Juniors. But a guy that I have to end this on, you can't talk about the Predators without talking about how good Tomasino played in the World Juniors. Uh, he showcased his elite shot over there. He had four goals, two assists, just under points per game with six points in seven games. Um, he really, really, really had a good World Juniors and was able to showcase himself out there. So I just wanted to be able to shout out to him. Uh, he had a great, great World Juniors for Canada there, and I think that had to be said because uh, Philippe Tomasino is a top prospect, and uh, he's going to be a guy that is going to be a part of Nashville's core as long as he keeps producing at the way he did for a long, long, long period of time. And then Ellie Tolvanen, as long as he's able to get his defensive game in or they trade him for more assets, he's going to still help out at Nashville Excuse me, in one way or another because you're either going to be able to get some assets for him or he's going to be able to figure out the other side of the game himself since he's a lightning bolt out there with a good shot and obviously a very, 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 very good tenacity to go to the net. So he's a guy, if he can figure out that defensive game, he's got it made. But this has been the Nashville Predators team preview slash outlook. I hope everyone enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric. Peace out, everybody.